as a caregiver, think about all the legal documents you need. Power of attorney, a will, living wills, and so many more. Then think about such things as disputes about medical bills. What if, instead of shelling out hefty fees for a few days of legal help, you paid a monthly membership and got a law firm for life? Well, we're taking legal representation and making some revisions in the form of accessible, affordable, full-service coverage. Finally, you can live life knowing you have a lawyer in your back pocket who, at the same time, isn't emptying it. It's called Legal Shield, and it's practical, affordable, and a must for the family caregiver. Visit caregiverlegal.com. That's caregiverlegal.com. Isn't it about time someone started advocating for you? www.caregiverlegal.com, an independent associate. Welcome back to Hope for the Caregiver. This is Peter Rosenberger. This is the program for you as a family caregiver. Hopeforthecaregiver.com. If you want some more information, hopeforthecaregiver.com. I want to pivot a little bit from what we talked about in the last segment and introduce somebody to you who I believe has some great insights for those caring for aging parents. She was a care manager at a hospital for many years, and something prompted her to change. She saw a great need. She wanted to meet that need, and that's exactly what she's doing now. She's also a social worker, and she brings a lengthy history of experience in dealing with this issue that is really challenging for a lot of family members. She hails in from Wisconsin, where I believe that she has a steady diet of cheese and dairy products. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You can't be lactose intolerant and live in Wisconsin, can you? Is that right, Jody? (laughs) That is correct, Peter. Well, this is Jody K. Benusa, and she is a wonderful lady. I it just ignore the lactose intolerant. Con- <laughs> uh, no, it, Wisconsin is known for their wonderful dairy products. It's a great state, and I'm glad to have you with us, Jody. I'm going to call you Jody K because that's what you like to be called. And, and you said that people vacillate between Jody and Jody K, but I'm going to go with Jody K because I'm from the South, and double names are all the rage in the South. And my wife's name is Gracie, but her real name is Mary Grace, and you can always tell when her parents were upset with her shit, they call her by her full name. So is that what happened with you? Did they get upset with you and call you by your full name? Well, sometimes they did, but I got to tell you, I like Jody K because when I think of that name, all the great things that happened in my life, I remember hearing Jody K. Well, so associated with good me. memories. Yes. All the bad things I hear in my life are associated with, Hey, you, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So you were a care manager at a hospital. You did this for many years and you saw a need. Actually, you saw a challenge. You saw a problem and it, it troubled you a little bit. What was the problem? Sure. So I was a hospital discharge planner um, in an ortho unit in a neuro um, surgery unit. I saw lots of traumas. Um, I helped um, the elderly, those that had hip fractures, strokes, Um, major accidents, brain injuries, that sort of thing. And I really just became frustrated with um, the hospital regulations, Medicare rules. I was not able to help my patients the way they needed and deserved to be helped. Can you give me an example? Sure. So when you're working with insurance, um, the, there is always a hurriedness. There's always an urgency to get them discharged from the hospital. We weren't really allowed to stop, take a breath, kind of explore options in the situation. We were to get our patients out to please Medicare, to get paid by insurance companies. And it was just a hurried, rushed system that drove me nuts. You know, in fact, this morning, actually just this morning, I was thinking, what was I doing a year ago? And I was walking to work and I remember how angry I was, how frustrated I was and how helpless I felt because I was going into that building again, not being able to serve my patients the way they needed. Mm. Well, I've, I've been a recipient of those kinds of things. And I remember Gracie was in ICU and the, um, they started calling about trying to transfer her out and get her into rehab and this and that. And she's less than a week out of surgery and still in ICU. 
And I looked at him. I said, Hey boys, y'all are, y'all are a little over your skis here. And yes. she's going to, she's going to move at the speed she's going to move at. And we'll just uh, wait and see. And they put so much pressure on me. And, and I kind of wonder how do, I mean, and I can handle that sort of thing. I can deal with it. I've been doing this a long time, but I kind of wonder how folks deal with it who haven't been dealing with it a long time. And I think that's what you jumped into the fray to help do because people are, they're just mowed over by this. Right. <clears throat> right. I would go above and beyond. I would work harder than my colleagues just because I would make sure to get in that room as soon as they were transferred to me from critical care to start explaining the whole process and really trying to be in that room as much as I could answering questions and helping them cope and learning even how to maneuver the healthcare system that they were thrown into all of a sudden. Mm. What are some, um, what are some potential quicksand places that you want to help people avoid when they find themselves in this situation, say that their mother broke her hip, uh, had a fall, you know, all those kinds of things, or, you know, dislocated shoulder, rotator cuff, all those kinds of things that you, you dealt with and you know how traumatic those things can be when the family finds themselves in this, what are some, what are some traps that you would like to help them avoid and how can they avoid them? Sure. So when you're, when you're in the inpatient hospital side, it is going to be important for you to be able to cope with the, the stresses that, that happen. Um, you don't know how to maneuver this. So when you know that you're going into the hospital for a traumatic reason, a hip fracture, dislocated shoulder, a stroke, any of that, always know that you are going to be asked right away about your discharge plan. Um, that is that even, even in the emergency room, even before surgery, they're going to probably start asking you what your discharge plan is. So have that mindset going in, knowing that that, that is going to be the case. The quicksand that I think that you, I can maybe help, maybe you think through a little bit is be, use your voice, use your voice when you are in that hospital. Don't allow that hospital um, worker to um, tell you where you're going to go. Um, they, they shouldn't be doing that anyway, but just really use your voice, express what you want and, and do the best you can in communicating openly, um, have other people there with you. So everyone can be sure that you're all on the same page. A lot of people don't know what the vocabulary looks like in this. They don't know the words to use. There are certain phrases that you can use and, and can commit to memories to help you navigate through these things. What, what's something that people can say they can write down as they listen to this program now. And sure. say, okay. I'm going to remember this phrase. Sure. Sure. So let's see a couple of things that you should remember is um, I, I'm really going to advocate and, and say that you really want to speak to your social worker. You want to hear options. You want to hear what, and here's, here's, a, here's a catchphrase that you're probably going to hear, what SNF do you want to be discharged to? A SNF is spelled S-N-F, and that stands for Skilled Nursing Facility. Okay. Skilled so, Nursing Facility, a SNF. That's a terrible acronym, but you it know is. what? I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you go with it on that. <laughs> That's what you're gonna hear. Which sniff can I make referrals to? So, um, here's something that was really kind of disheartening to me is I had patients that really did not want to go to any skilled nursing facility for rehab. They um, may be up with one person, a one person assist, you know, maybe they had that person at home, but because the hospital is so desperate in getting the patients out and they need to be, they need their beds. I understand that, that situation too, that if, if that patient be, could be given another day, another four days, um, just recuperating, they could make it home. Okay. And that was really frustrating to me. Well, and it, it, I, I share that because I've been there and I, I understand that I, um, I look at the things that people deal with in this, and I know that they are a little bit overwhelmed because the system is extremely intimidating when you've never been there. 
getting involved, if you see your parents aging and you know some things are coming down the pike, what's the best way to find a social worker in their area who can do what you do or do you, can you work across the, the country or how does that work? Um, so yes, I can work across the country. What someone could do, and this can be a little bit time consuming and that's why you need to start the process early. Yeah, yeah um, Don't wait to do it in the emergency room. No, no. <laughs> the longer you wait, the, the harder it is, but you can reach out to your local County here in Wisconsin. We call it the ADRC, the aging and disability resource center. That is a good spot to start. Um, however, I will say that if you do have some assets, if you have some money and you don't qualify for medical assistance, it's going to be a little bit harder to reach out to the aging and disability resource centers out there. Um, they will help, but it's just a little bit slower. So I would highly suggest just um, reaching out, maybe even calling your primary care physician and ask for the clinic social worker. That would be a good place to start as well. I think that that is probably the the best place to start, isn't it? That it sounds that just sounds like it'd be a good place for everybody knows their primary care doctor. Say, hey, look, while you're there, let's get a referral and let's not wait until a fall happens or something bad happens. I understand that, and and I look back at the times with me, and I I just didn't have that, and I was kind of left to forage for myself, and that's why I'm always looking for people who can bring some insights. Last, uh, in just about a minute or so, one last tip or thought you have to help people navigate this a little smoother. Sure. I think it is absolutely just one of the most important things is have that discussion with your elderly loved one today about what your goals of your, your goals are, your life goals. Have it now before the crisis hits. So you are on the same page. So when that, if, if, for some reason, a hip fracture does happen, you're going to know. You're already going to have a plan in place. You're going to know the wishes and desires of that one, and you can help them um, recover faster and get to where they need to be in a more pleasant way. Yeah, yeah I, I, there, There's going to be some waves and some rocks in this particular river that we're going down, but they don't <laughs> have to capsize us. And, and I love correct. what you're talking about. Just let's start now. Let's have that conversation. If people want to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. what's the best way to do that? Sure. I would love to, to speak to anyone. Um, easiest way is going to be to visit my website, Midwest Geriatric Consulting Services.com. And you can click through and I have um, a contact me link and I would okay. be more than happy to get in touch with you. And I'll put this on the podcast, Midwest Geriatric Consulting Services. That's a long title.com, but it's spelled just like it sounds Midwest Geriatric Consulting Services.com. This is Jody Capanusa. And Jody K, I really do appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. I, I look, I, I've been overwhelmed by these things and now I kind of push back because I kind of walk in there and and I, you know, I tell them I'm board certified in cranial proctology. And they look at me kind of funny and write it down and keep going. <laughs> and I don't bother <laughs> to explain it. Uh, but for people getting there for the first time, this can be daunting. And you have provided some some good counsel and a friendly voice and some resources that people can go up to your website. So it's Midwest Geriatric Consulting Services.com. Jody K. Benusa. Jody K., thank you very much for being a part of the program. Thank you so much, Peter. My pleasure. All right. We'll see you in just a moment. Don't go away. Hope for the caregiver. Peter Rosenberger. He's been a caregiver since the Cold War. Thank you.